A New York judge ordered Donald Trump and his family business to pay more than $350 million in penalties for fraudulently inflating his wealth for financial gain. If upheld, the ruling could force Trump to forfeit a sizable chunk of his money and lead to a reshuffling at the Trump Organization, which is run by his sons, Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. Uh, it's a ridiculous award. Listen, a fine of $355 million for doing a perfect job. We asked Mark Zauderer, a veteran New York trial and appellate lawyer, to break down the judge's decision and what it means for Trump's business empire. I think it's fair to say that the attorney general has accomplished her stated goal of uh, bringing uh, to account the Trump organization as she saw it, because the court has essentially agreed with her, I'd say 100 percent. He's talking about the New York attorney general, Letitia James, who brought the lawsuit against Trump and his adult children in 2022. James, a Democrat and vocal critic of Trump, accused the former president of engaging in a decade-long scheme to fraudulently and falsely value his assets to acquire loans at bargain rates. Donald Trump may have authored the art of the deal, but he perfected the art of the steal. We're dealing with an unusual statute that gives the attorney general extraordinary power in the regulation of the public markets that a private litigant bringing a lawsuit, for example, for fraud, would not have such an advantage for. In round one, the judge found that Trump had benefited, in effect had gotten the ill-gotten gains from his frauds. And what happened in phase two here, the trial judge, consistent with what he outlined in the first decision, made specific findings on how much those ill-gotten gains were. The judge tempered his remarks and observations to a certain extent, you know, making reference to Bernie Madoff, for example, whom he posited as a distinction between Madoff's behavior and what he found here in this case, which he said, look, it's not murder. In his view, the remedies that he imposed were something, uh, if you'd connect the dots, something short of what he might have imposed had the, had the matters that he found were improper been even more serious. Justice Arthur Engeron concluded that Trump, his eldest sons, and two former top finance executives were liable for falsifying records, issuing false documents, and other related conspiracy offenses. The judge ordered Trump to pay $355 million, just shy of the $370 million James requested. He also barred Trump from holding a position as an officer or director of a New York company for three years. The most recent decision is not totally surprising, except in one respect. He said in the first decision that he was going to dissolve the company in New York, pull its certificates, which would be basically the death knell for the company. He did not do so in this most recent decision. One of the things that the judge noted in a footnote to his decision was a reason why he was pulling back on the cancellation of business certificates is what he characterized as potential economic harm could come from that remedy. Instead, he imposed a series of controls on the company to ensure that the continuation of the business would be closely monitored. The judge extended the appointment of an independent monitor to oversee the Trump Organization for at least three years. That monitor will be involved day to day in making the business decisions of the organization, and virtually nothing will be done by the organization without the approval of that day to day, on the ground, financial monitor in the organization. Trump and the Trump Organization were also banned from applying for loans from any financial institution registered or chartered in New York State for three years. It's not just the, the dollars that have to be uh, reimbursed that are significant for the Trump Organization. They're going to likely have difficulty obtaining financing. People who do business with them may be uncertain for both financial reasons and even reputational reasons. Trump, the current Republican frontrunner in the 2024 presidential election, has denounced the case as a partisan abuse of the justice system. Uh, will appeal, will be successful, I think, because frankly, if we're not successful, New York State is gone. Everything that the judge imposed may go forward, or some of it may go forward, and not other parts of it. You know, for example, uh, the monitorship the court may allow to continue, uh, but on the other hand, stay enforcement of the money part, because Trump posts a bond. In terms of what we expect in the months or year to come, it's very unlikely 
that the appeals will be finished in this case. The Trump Organization has a significant period of time to take an appeal. The appeals then have to be briefed. That takes time, briefs in support, briefs in opposition. So the likelihood that this will be finally resolved before the November 2024 election is quite small.